In this lecture, we're going to create a domain controller by installing the Active Directory Domain Services or ADDS role. Remember that any server running the ADDS role is considered a domain controller. We're going to add this role to our server and create a new domain called itflea.com. This is the name of my website, but you can use any name that you'd want, or if you want to keep things simple, you can use itflea.com too. You won't break my website or anything silly like that because there's no internet DNS servers pointing to the domain that we're about to create. Finally, once we add the ADDS roles, we will promote the server as a domain controller and then we'll be done. You should already know how to install a server role on the server you're currently logged into, but I'm going to cover the steps again. Open Server Manager and select Manage, Add Roles and Features. On the Installation Type screen, leave the default option Role-Based or Feature-Based checkbox checked and click Next. In the Server Roles list, choose the Active Directory Domain Services role. You will see a pop-up window stating that you cannot install ADDS unless certain role services or features are also installed. Click the Add Features button and then click Next to proceed to the Features screen. We do not need any additional features as all the required features were already added. Again click Next. Now you will be brought to the ADDS screen. It tells us that we will also need to install the DNS role if we have not already set it up. Click Next and continue on to the confirmation screen. Here we can see the roles and features we are about to install. Click Install and wait for the installation to finish. Once the installation is complete, you will have post deployment configuration steps that you will also need to complete. Once the installation is complete, click the notification flag next to Manage and choose Promote this server to a domain controller. The ADDS configuration wizard will appear giving us three options. The first option, Add a domain controller to an existing domain, is for adding additional domain controllers to a domain you've already created. This option is not suitable for us because we have not yet created a domain. The second option, Add a domain to an existing forest, is for adding a child also known as subdomain. Let me elaborate on this. We are going to create a domain called itflea.com. If that domain already existed, we could create a sub or child domain called courses.itflea.com. In theory, we could set up this domain called courses.itflea.com simply to separate our students and teachers from our administrators and developers who reside in the domain itflea.com. You could configure this subdomain so that admins from the itflea.com domain can reach into the courses.itflea.com domain and make changes, but students and teachers could not reach back into the resources of the itflea.com domain. Again, this is not an appropriate option for us because the itflea.com domain does not yet exist. The third option is to add a new forest. This will allow us to create and specify a new domain. Choose this option and specify a root domain name. I'm going to enter itflea.com and click Next. It will take a second before the Domain Controller Options screen will appear, so just be patient while it processes. The first two options, Forest Functional Level and Domain Functional Level, specify which operating system the Domain Controller will use. You need to specify the OS you are using, and in this case, it's Windows Server 2016. There's a bug with the latest version of 2016 that I'm using, where the developers did not configure this screen to show the latest version as Server 2016, and instead shows Windows Server Technical Preview. Now, this is because the server was just released, and I guess they just didn't catch this when they're going through development. And prior to this release, there was the Windows Server Technical Preview 5, and they just need to update this. So if you see Windows Server 2016, go ahead and choose that. If you still don't see Windows Server 2016, choose the Windows Server Technical Preview. Make sure that the Domain Name System, or DNS Server, checkbox is checked. If you remember, when we installed ADDS, it said that we had to install this role in order for the DC to function properly. The global catalog option means that the server will list all Active Directory objects. This is a requirement for the primary domain controller or when we're creating a new domain forest. If you choose the read only domain controller option, then the domain controller will not be able to make changes to the domain. We will want to make changes to our domain, so make sure you do not check this checkbox. Type in the DSRM password and make sure that you either write it down or memorize it. 
The DSRM password allows an administrator to take an instance of AD offline for reasons like maintenance or troubleshooting. This is not commonly used, but you'll want to keep the password around just in case. Click Next and proceed on to the DNS options. On the DNS options screen, you will see a warning about the DNS delegation. This warning means that people on the internet will not be able to resolve local DNS names on your local DNS server, names like itflea.com or itfdc01, etc. This is fine because we don't want people on the internet to be able to access our server for several reasons. One of them is security. Number two, we don't want to be using a domain that's actually a website and causing issues. Click Next and proceed on to the additional options. The NetBIOS name is populated for us as ITFLEA. The NetBIOS name is an abbreviated version of the Fully Qualified Domain Name or FQDN, which is ITFLEA.com. I'm going to leave this at the default of ITFLEA and click Continue. On the Paths screen, we can see the default paths chosen for the folders that are required by ADDS. If you'd like to choose an alternative drive, you can do so by clicking the dot 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 button and choosing an alternative path. I recommend that you leave them at the default settings and click Next. Now we are brought to the Review Options screen where we can see all of the options we have chosen so far. If you would like, you can click the View Script button and you will be presented with a PowerShell script that you can save in order to later execute and quickly complete the wizard with the same settings we just used. Close out of the PowerShell script and click Next. Now we are brought to the prerequisite check window. The wizard is now going to verify that the server is ready to be promoted as a DC. This will take a few minutes before it is ready, so just be patient while it completes the checks. Once the checks are complete, at the top you will see that all prerequisite checks have passed. If you encounter any errors that will not allow you to promote the server as a domain controller, you're going to need to Google each error and figure out what's wrong and fix it. Usually these errors are pretty simple to fix, so a quick Google will tell you exactly what's wrong and how to fix it. Once you've fixed the errors, click the link that says Rerun Prerequisites Check and wait for the checks to finish again. Under the View Results window, we can see that there are various warnings. None of these are critical, but it's worth reading through them. The first one is a security setting, stating that anything with cryptography not compatible with Windows NT 4.0, which is really old by the way, will be blocked. This is not an issue with us because we're not using old servers or old technology. The second is in regards to our first networking adapter not having a static IP address. Now this is because our first adapter is connected to our NAT adapter and it will not be used for our local network. It's only good for connecting us to the internet, so we can ignore this warning. The third warning is about DNS delegation. Again, we do not care if people on the internet can resolve our DNS records within our network. Click the install button and wait for the installation to complete and the server to reboot. This can take a good while depending on the speed of your server, so you need to be patient while it works. I'm going to speed up this video so you don't have to sit here and watch the entire installation. Once the installation completes and the server reboots, press right control and delete to log in. The first thing you'll notice is the NetBIOS name of our domain precedes the user account we are logging into. In this case, it's itflea backslash administrator. This is in the format of domain name backslash domain username. If we had multiple domains, we could specify a different domain by typing in the name of the domain we want to use, followed by a backslash, and then the name of the domain user account that we want to log into. Type in the password you used to create the administrator account when you first install the server and log in. Once the desktop loads and server manager opens, the first thing you'll notice is the new roles AD, DS, and DNS. Now our domain controller is completely built. Great job getting that done. I will see you in the next lecture.